We are here with the Mary Med executive team. I'm Shad Dales, Cannabis Exclusive here on TDR. I want to go back to John Levine. As you said earlier, this is a top 10 market cap company in the U.S. So the original founder, Bob Fireman, and I know your whole team up there was, has learned a lot from him, but you guys are now the future. You're moving ahead. What would you think right now where you are as a company? Well, Bob and I started this in, like I said, 2008, and we had a dream of what we were envisioning. And over the years, we've put a terrific team around us, which I'm very proud to have Tim and Ryan, uh, two real people that have been here with me for a very long time. As I said earlier, Tim gave me a lot of knowledge into how to improve <clears throat> each of our grow and processing areas and adding people around. Bob has been, was proud when, we, when he was with us and I'm sure he's looking down even prouder hearing that we're in the top 10 of market cap. Yeah, our stock it's may impressive. not be high as, as we would have liked it to be, but you know what? Maybe everybody else just came down to the reality that yeah. they should be down where we were, or we should be much higher. Yeah, I still feel we should be higher, but we're, <laughs> we're, we're in the market. We're showing people who we it's are. People are starting to understand that. But the fact is, I think Bob would be extremely proud, just as I am, of the yeah. whole team that we have here and I'm great to have the family that I have to keep taking to this to the next level. I think the succession plan that we put in place just shows that when you're ready for any type of a change, you can succeed. And that's how we have succeeded yeah. over the last year. And we're gonna continue that with uh, building this company to what Bob and I envisioned and what now the new group and I are envisioning for the future. This is all about the growth and opportunities of becoming one of the top leaders which we were and still are in my eyes, but I just think that people don't realize that we have more here yeah. than anybody really knows. Ryan, success, you know, to achieve that requires a lot of hard work and commitment. Um, Bob, as we know, has been a perfectionist. What drove you crazy the most about Bob when it came to his perfectionism? Uh, <laughs> uh, pick one, well, just, just pick one. Just pick one. <laughs> you know, um, Bob challenged you. Oh, yeah, right? I, I, and, and maybe um, even when he knew you were right, he, he challenged you. Um, and so when you wanted to make a, a really fast decision, uh, sometimes uh, he slowed those decisions down a little bit and made you think about them twice okay. or three times, uh, <laughs> or five. you know, and I, I feel like, uh, you know, one of our, one of our major values is being agile and, uh, and, and in order to, you know, capitalize quickly on things that you see, you have to be agile and you have to move fast. And, uh, the bigger the company, the harder that becomes over time. Um, but, you know, we, we really do value that here yeah. and we live by it. What do you guys think you'll learn the most about each other as a team? Like, you know, some of the pros and cons. Can we oh. be honest? Tim said here. <laughs> said, oh. How much time do we Man, have? You I, need a scotch. <laughs> I need to lay down on a couch and a scotch so I can really let some things off my chest. Dad. Come on. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, this has been great so far. But, you know, I want to go back to you, Susan. Just you've been here for a year now. Yep. Uh, what do you think is the biggest thing that you've learned uh, about the industry and in a lot of ways, the role that you're doing within the company? Yeah, I mean, it's it's much harder than I thought, as I've said before. So I have learned a lot about taxes. I thought John was insane at first of how he had everything structured with wholesale, real estate, management companies. So, you know, we are, you know, uh, dealing with the 280E still. We've got a bunch of states yeah. that have been relief, but I could not believe until I saw it that we're the only company that gets tactic gross margin. It's ridiculous. Um, I've learned that capital is very hard to come by. So we were very fortunate. So I had a great team. So we brought the management team before 30 different banks and we had, you know, five different banks ready to give us money. Um, we still have people calling going, Hey, you know, can I get you some more money? So I think this management really? team, yeah, because wow. they had a really strong, you know, balance sheet when I started and it was augmented with the, uh, financing we did that they really like our margins. They like the, the states that we've selected. So, you know, it's hard, but a lot of people don't realize all of the complexity. And I think the regulation is a lot harder than I thought state to state maintaining all those licenses. And they've done a great job at each state. They have GMs that are protecting the license and making sure we're in compliance. So, you know, hats off. And so they know how to do it in new states that we're entering. So it's Op been operating in two states, presence in six now, correct? Uh, we're operating in more than we're in seven. We'll be in seven, right? Six, six, states. six. six states. operate. Yeah. Operating Currently six, operating in Missouri six. on the way. On the way. Yep. Wow. Yeah, we opened yep. up in Ohio, our first dispensary, a yep. couple of weeks ago. Yep, so Ohio's live two weeks ago. What's that Last saying? Week. I don't Last want to sit and give any names, but there's been some high-profile names that have left the competitive Massachusetts market. And as I said earlier in a previous podcast, is that your Nature's Heritage brand is actually number one selling 
flower brand in the uh, state of Massachusetts. But um, you're starting to see this shift where more and more companies don't care about market size and being in all these states and they're downsizing. Yeah. So if that does true, come true, and I'll go back to you, Susan, like what does this you know, whole Northeastern region and opportunity look like for you as a company, especially as you're building a stronger and stronger fo footprint here? Well, I think we're not like scattered. We've picked very carefully the states we're in. So the states we're in, we, you know, we have in um, Maryland where, you know, the time is uh, now we're, we're looking at some other dispensaries because I guess everyone's excited for adult use, but we're not, you know, going into New York. We're not picking random states. So the states we're in, we're going in deep. Um, and then, you know, a few selective states that are, you know, of interest to us, but we are very focused yeah. on, you know, a discrete set of states that we think make sense for us. That there was we can a be term, the winners. Yeah. There was a term quoted by Bob back in the day. We wanted to be the beast of the East, right? Beast of the East. The beast mm -hmm. of the East. Like the Big East, the original, That's it, right? The original the Big East. The yes. original Big East. And I mean, something Susan said, I don't want to glaze over how, you know, banks and, and folks are still calling saying, we want to give you money. I think, it's you know, weird, that yeah. is just from the discipline from, from Bob and John and just the foundation of this company. So um, I, I think that's exceptional when so many people are looking and saying, the well's dry, there's no money out there, when we still have the opportunity with for growth. So it's right. great. Yeah, in, in New England is a much, or sorry, the Northeast is a much different area. It has been for many centuries. I was in the mass merchandising 20 yeah. plus years ago where people would always ask me, how can mass merchandisers have so many presents in the New England area and not have a Walmart and all these uh, Target at the time? And it was because of loyalty. <clears throat> the people in the Northeast are a lot more loyal and it's getting that customer base to really follow you. So it's what really that, about like marketing it and marketing it right we're become the number one flower because we have that consistency that people want. So people are dedicated to buying our flower. If we open up more locations throughout the Northeast, the problem is it's very limited licenses in the Northeast, like a lot of other states have unlimited. Massachusetts has unlimited, yeah. but one group can only own three. three. So you're limited on really? what you can do. Yeah. Why do you think people from the Northeast are so loyal? You find that? Are they more loyal? Like, you know, I, I understand what John's saying, but like, give me maybe some examples. Fanatics, right? Are Fan they? addicts. Same thing with sports teams, right? Yeah, yeah. We're, oh, God, this is where the fights up. happen at, at Red Sox <laughs> games, right? I mean, it's, I think it's just in the blood of, of these folks, very passionate about what they care about. But it has to be good. Uh, and, to, yeah, and the course. truth is, nature is. I'll tell you, right? I mean, nature is objectively, yeah, nature really delivers. Like, I felt that way before before I'd ever joined the company. And, and you see it on social media, just anecdotally, and obviously the register rings. It's really good. You open up a jar of nature's. If you know what you're looking at, smelling, and ultimately smoking, you know that it delivers. And at the end of the day, you're going to be loyal, loyal to quality. Yeah, Two years ago, Massachusetts test. had a lot of people complaining. And publicly in the um, the Reddit, Reddit's Reddit's and other channel, social, yep. saying that because they can't see what's in the packaging because Massachusetts doesn't allow right. see through or people right. to be able to open the product on site, people were complaining, and we became number one because people finally realized every time I go buy Nature's Heritage, hey, it's the same quality flowers, yeah, it's, it's the same, it's the same dryness, the same buds, the it's buds good, it's are consistent. great, it smokes yeah. consistent. And that really does change. But my biggest surprise out of all the products is the is the Betty Zeddies because Taffy's, New England Taffy area, I mean, this is it. People know Taffy here, but it's selling great in Maryland, Delaware, and uh, soon to be Illinois. Let's soon go. Soon to be Illinois. It was, it was great in Illinois. It was the number one selling you guys said that product before. in uh, Illinois four years ago. Yeah. And we were in Nevada. We were doing great, but we just didn't have a good enough So partner GTI to partnership in Illinois. Yep. They kiboshed that, basically started their own product. You guys are going back in by yourself. So, yeah. you know, you've said like there's a lot of people from that state are pretty pumped up that that brand is coming back in. What, what, is, what does that say? You talk about branding. It's People remember, right? Don't we all in our own way when it comes to consumer goods? You remember brands that delivered for you. Mm -hmm. And if, un if unfortunately a brand you love goes away and comes back, you know, you can't wait for it. Can't wait for it. So I, th I think we're hearing that. I mean, we get emails all the time. When are you coming back? When are you coming back? 
So it's like you and the McRib. When the McRib goes away, you get really upset. <laughs> yes, and the Shamrock Shake. Oh, exactly. <laughs> hey, show me the real side. What was that? Although I was, although I was a fan of Coke too. I didn't really care when Coke Classic. Right. <laughs> so you Red like Sox fan now, or still a Yankees fan? Hardly, hardly. Uh, hardly. We're working on it. Can't we're working it. on it. I go to one Red Sox game a year. Do you? It's the Yankees. Yeah. So, you, so you were watching that last. Still night. Still, 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 Red Sox still beat them when Howard goes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm actually three and zero for Yankees. Yankees against the Red Sox. You know, I have to tell you, I, I, I'm sure if any of you have been Red Sox fans who go to Yankee Stadium, you're probably treated very differently. Okay. Here, I have to tell you, it's like, I assume the Red Sox fans would be all over me and uh, the, no, it's just collegial and nice. I think they're just so drunk with their freaking <laughs> success. They don't care anymore. Right. Seem to be stoned though. Right? All right, I'll tell you, yeah. back in the day yeah. when I used to go as a little yeah. kid, my grandmother beat somebody from New York with a pocketbook <laughs> because he, he accidentally <laughs> fell on me. Yeah, oh, that's great. Stupor, well, but three World Series, mm-hmm. five NBA titles, right? A couple of Super Bowl rings, et cetera, et cetera. It does we'll, change yeah. it. We'll change that. We'll change yeah. that mindset. You had a good story for me yesterday, you know, or when you talked about joining the company and how you left Acreage, uh, what was the one thing that really kept, because you had a lot of opportunities to sign with a lot of different companies in the space, Hardly, but chose MerryMed, like what, what was it that stood out to you? Honestly, it, well, it was, it was two things. It was um, growing company. I saw, I saw the opportunity of solid team and great brand. And that's the mix. Just tell him. The mix. Just tell him. Mm-hmm. Just brought him over, didn't you, Timmy? And he, Pop Bob's you know. here. <laughs> You're in the air. What's up? I mean, yeah, really, yeah. you know, all joking aside, it was I came up for a day and yeah, spent yeah. time with Bob, John, Brian, Tim, others, and it was a palpable culture. Yeah. I had I had come from other environments, maybe You've had some was breaks. a little focused on the balance sheet and nothing else. This is balance sheet for sure, where this is serious business, but yeah. there's a way to have fun as you're probably experiencing, collegial fun, interesting. Um, and then at the end of the day, the winner will be brand. If you don't have a great brand, you're not gonna win. And and we've got superior brands. So all those things added up, you know, was the winner for me. It's a big, easy one. different ecosystem for you because I know you were saying before, like you were part of some big brands, like working with McDonald's in the early 90s, filming commercial shoots with like Michael Jordan and Larry Bird post Olympics, that horse commercial, people can remember that. That's a pretty iconic commercial to say the least. That's some fun. I've had some fun times in my career in yeah. entrepreneurship, but when cannabis came to me five years ago, this yeah, yeah. predates Mary Met or Acreage, but had an opportunity to get in the space and uh, and never look back. Do you I just, s- I, love, I, love, I love the industry. Do you think in eventually due time, as far as a branding opportunity that this industry will look similar to alcohol where you see commercials during the Super Bowl? Because I know that was something you knew the commercial wasn't going to run with the whole acreage thing, but that was a great strategy in play. But will we see one day soon products within this industry during 30 second ads or 60 second ads in the Super Bowl? hundred percent. Yeah. See, look, you're seeing, you're seeing incremental movement every day. Um, there are, I think you're going to start seeing some more local market buys yeah. available in legal markets. So, you know, to a typical consumer, you may not know the difference between a national spot and a local spot. You're going to start seeing local spots from legal operators and legal brands. I I have no doubt about that. And there's some opportunity across streaming services and platforms um, as well. I think you're going to start seeing popping up, too. So, look, when you've got 70 percent of the populace that wants legalization, when you've got more than 50 percent of the country that already is an addressable market for legal cannabis, Right. And a growing number of our electeds in D.C. that want to change. It's only a matter of time. Now, will it be a replication of alcohol or not? I'm not smart enough to know that. I don't think any of us have enough of a crystal ball, although we all have our own opinions. But it's not too far out in the future that you're talking about a mainstream product that really is all about a miracle plant that grows out of the ground versus a manufactured, you know, opioid or 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 some other, you know, vice. The NFL has two contracts now online. We could be seeing commercials sooner than you think. Yeah. Mm. Talk about the NFL. We were at your place. 
<laughs> you ever grab some taffy, some Betty Zetties? You're like you're, this, talking about, you're talking about the creator of Betty Zetties right there. Really? One of the the creators, two yeah. of them made it yeah, in their basement. Did you, sweaties, yeah. Betty's Sweaties, or yeah. whatever. Whoa, you call well, Betty's yeah. Betty Zetties. Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. I, I have not heard this story. Oh, before. smash it against yeah. the so, poles of the basement. What were you guys doing? When did this all sweaty start? Sweaty Betties. Yeah, that's why. 2013. I, yeah. That's hilarious. I mean, story. twenty. You gotta tell it to him. 2011, 2012. I started a company. Massachusetts went medical. And it was time to start applying here. Um, built a board, invited Ryan to be part of the, the management team on the board. Um, and we applied. We applied. We actually worked with Bob and John and, and Seagal Consulting amongst four other teams. And we didn't, we didn't win. Um, it was very political, very limited, one or two per county. Long story long, we didn't win. We said, we want to be in this business. Yeah. What are we going to do to stay relevant? Build a brand, and and that's where it started. And um, yeah, him and our, there's a third partner in here, Sean Crowley, who uh, was instrumental running through walls. I mean, we we spent a ton of time, effort, hired chefs from Neko, from Johnson and Wales, from Korea, all kinds of people putting together uh, ideas and learned a little bit here and there, and came up with the final, the final, final. Of How did you guys? I don't even know why fruit chew versus gummy, which would have been the prevailing. Well, it was caramel to start, and actually, his wife was instrumental in the fruit chew. I, yeah, you know the story better than I do, but we were away. I think we were out in Oregon. We were in a North butane extract. Exactly. So we had gone on a, on a, a week. Uh, I was going to say, guys, guys weekend butane yeah. 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 extraction we for us. Week, and, we, and I'll tell you, there's a story within that story. I mean, it was a crazy trip. <laughs> yeah. But uh, while we were away, Masonic my Lodge. wife had taken our caramel recipe and uh, looked up a fruit chew recipe. Okay. And that fruit chew recipe used all kinds of artificial colors and flavors and and butter in the recipe so it wasn't the final stage but it was it was the beginning when we got back and we tried it we said wow that's delicious really right now my software mind uh tim's mind we said how do we get to differentiation right and and then it was all right well there is no other salt water taffy out there uh let's make it vegan let's color the product with fruits and vegetables let's use natural flavors and let's really create a barrier to anybody anybody can go out and create a taffy but can they create it as, as well as we have right and are you surprised that more companies haven't gone that approach um because everybody loves know, a good starburst right a hundred percent so I, I i've always thought that it was an op a missed opportunity by others i mean I don't think gummies are as a popular of a product uh, in convenience stores as some fruit chew type product. Hundred percent. And I'm biased, and I think there are there are a ton of companies that have tried it. Um, I wouldn't say failed, but they haven't made it to the platform that Betty's is. Um, whether it be not being able to hold its its stability, they're melting all over the place, or just have kind of a plasticky taste. Yeah. It, it's not all natural like ours are. So um, I think there are uh, probably a half a dozen out there that are going for the title, but yeah, they're not yeah. there yet. Yeah. Everything we learned with creating Betty's, uh, we apply to every one of our brands, right? Yeah. So it's not just about creating a drink mix. It's how do we create the best drink mix? How do we create differentiation within that drink mix? How do we pay attention to the consumer trends that are happening outside of cannabis and merge all those things together and have passion behind it all? Yeah. And I think there's a, you know, there's a rush to be fast in this mm -hmm. industry. Uh, there's a rush to be not great, just good. And I think we really hold a, a high bar here in terms of what we expect out of our products day one. And then, you know, Betty's, when, when Marimed purchased Betty's, was a completely different product than it is today. Yeah. I mean, it didn't have any of the need states. Um, you know, sleep was a skew that we developed once once uh, Marimed owned Betty's. So yeah. we continue, like we continue to innovate across Betty's, across Nature's, across Vibations, Bubby's Baked, in house. Every one of our brands, we continually innovate with a ton of passion and with a standard. Sorry to cut you off. Is you know what? How would this do? if it was not infused on a artisanal supermarket shelf. Right. And if it wouldn't sell well there, you know, it's not ready for 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 a yeah. THC based and you know infusion and which makes sense. And and, and so I, I would put anything that we produce up against uh, things you'd find in the store. I think it's important for people to know within this industry, like can you imagine there's companies out there today that feel that branding's not that important? <laughs> We've that's heard, what that, we've heard it. We've heard it before. That, that's what's going on. <laughs> yes, we have. Yes. And people say, well, why is my portfolio down 90%? Mm -hmm. When you start to track back, 
these are the things, the business fundamentals that viewers and investors within the space need to understand mm -hmm. about the journey. But yeah, and that's what I was leading to in the beginning where I said six, seven years ago, it was a little easier because there wasn't as much competition on the shelf. Shelf space was an abundant. There might have been 12 different edibles. Now yeah. there's 60 some odd edibles at every dispensary. So it's being really crowded. And if you haven't created a brand, it's you're going to get lost in the sauce. Who would have who would have a job in marketing, sales or brand at J&J &J or Procter & Gamble, Unilever? If they said brand doesn't matter, you know, to not have that mindset is just, you're going to die off. Imagine 10 years from now, we look back. What was that called? 270, 270, 280, 280, 280. tax. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what people will be amazing discussing. And we took, like, take a look at the opportunity. You've got a great team here, John. Thank you. you. Know, They're a we, great team. As we close out, um, with our viewers that are watching this, and I know there's a lot of people that love the Maribet story, what gets you excited about the team that you basically built in the direction of this company and the growth of the industry over the next five years? Well, with the help of my brothers and sisters, we're going to take this company to the next level with continued growth, expansion through M&A, or just expansion through just ordinary course of business. Like Susan said, we've got banks knocking at our door every day wanting to lend us money. But I think that we're going to be the first to change the banking industry and find yeah. a person that will lend us real money. At proper rates. At proper rates. At proper, proper rates. rates. Well said, CFO. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a real discipline to not just take money when it's available. It has to be used for incremental growth within a short time period, yeah. right? We're not just trying to take down money for a war chest. We're trying to use it and make money from that. We money. don't want yeah. to destroy our balance sheet. Yeah. yeah. Very focused. So what do you guys think? You like this round table? A little style with the whole of executives in at once? Let us know what you also think about the direction of this company, Marybed, and what excites you the most. This has been great. John, Tim, Howard, Susan, Ryan, this has been great. Love Boston. Have to come back again <laughs> soon, right? Thanks, Chef. Go Benny. Go. Anytime. Go come back anytime.